You know, a Justin Western boot represents one of the greatest values in footwear, both in materials and craftsmanship. There can be up to 16 square feet of leather in a pair of boots and up to 130 steps in the making of a single pair. Let's take a few moments and visit one of our U.S. factories to see our master craftsmen at work. Skilled workmanship, quality materials, and immense pride. Three things that go into every pair of Justin boots that help make them the most sought after boots in the world. Consider the labor that goes into making a pair of boots. More than 100 steps are required to produce just one pair. Over the next few minutes, you'll get a feel for what it takes to make a pair of Justin boots. So let's get started with the raw materials. That means natural leathers. And not just a yard or two, we're talking up to 16 square feet. Now you begin to see what an incredible value these boots really are. Once the pieces are cut, a craftsman begins by cementing the piping to the tops of the boots, then cements the inside lining to the outside leather tops. This holds the parts in place while another skilled craftsman stitches and trims the excess leather lining. Can you imagine top stitching by hand? That's how it was done in the old days. Thankfully, today's technology allows us to stitch complex patterns quickly, efficiently, and consistently using computer stitchers like this one. From here, the hard counter is stitched to the back quarter. Once the vamp lining is sewn to the top, the vamp, or the front part of the boot, is stitched to the front quarter of the boot. Next, the front and back parts of the boot are sewn together. At this point, the tops are turned right side out. The tops are perforated to allow the pull straps to be inserted and bar tacked. Now that the uppers are complete, the process of shaping the boot into its final three-dimensional form begins. This process, called freeze form molding, shapes the heel counter. To start the lasting process, a leather insole nailed to a polyethylene last is placed inside the boot upper. Watch closely and you'll see the definition of the word skills. This bootmaker shapes the boot over the last using nails to hold and form the leather. Now it's time to separate the vamp from the vamp lining in order to apply the elastic box toe. It's wet now, but once it sets, it becomes very hard. Using copper wire, the bootmaker carefully works all the wrinkles out of the leather and gives the box toe its final shape. Inseaming is next. The sole welt provides us with the medium needed in order to attach the outsole. This type of construction also allows for resoling the boot. After the insole nails are taken out, the excess leather is trimmed and the bottom of the boot is prepared for the metal shank. This gives Justin boot wearers added arch support. Next, the outsoles are heated to activate the adhesives and a special sole press machine bonds the outsoles to the bottom of the boots. Using the shape of the boot as a guide, the craftsman trims the excess leather. Once this is done, the outsole is sewn to the welt. One of the most distinctive marks of a well-made boot is the pegging. Because of the way the outsole is rolled to hold the shank, a row of brass nails and a row of wooden pegs are used to secure and hold the outsole between the welt and the heel. Here you see an expert craftsman applying both. Next, the heels are attached. From here, boot specialists begin to carefully trim and shape the heels. They know exactly how to shape the heels to match the specifications of that particular style. After this process is completed, the heels and outsoles are inked and burnished. At this point, the boots are ready to wear. However, additional steps, washing, top forming, hand dressing, final finishing, and polishing are still to come. Like we said, more than 100 steps are required to make a Justin boot, and up to 16 square feet of leather goes into a pair. So, now you know why every pair of Justin boots is such a terrific value, and why they've stood the test of time for over 125 years.